Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the second episode of the day and overall the 11th episode of Fighting for A5, where we go over the document, problem number 12. Um, keep in mind, we skipped problem number 11 because that dealt with chi-squared test, which we are not learning this year before the AP. We will discuss chi-squared after AP. Of course, brought to you by Couch Potato Brands, Snack Foods, and Beverages. Now, this problem um, had a whole bunch of questions. Um, I, had, I fielded a whole bunch of questions from students basically wondering if their response was enough to get an essentially correct. So I just want to make something clear here. Uh, there's a difference between discussing the scatter plot, the data in the scatter plot, and discussing a model. Okay, the model is some specific curve or some specific line that has specific quantities associated with it a specific slope, a specific um, y intercept, something along those lines. When we are asked to describe the data in a scatter plot, there's no specific quantity. Um, there are certain general trends. Um, and maybe um, if we are given a little bit more information, we might be able to find like a correlation coefficient, but that's really the only qual uh, quantity that we might be able to state regarding the data itself. Okay, so keep that in mind. Obviously, um, so I, I want to backtrack a little bit. Um, obviously, each data point itself has two specific quantities um, that define those points. But I mean, in regarding, you know, the trend, the overall trend of the data, we can't really quantify it um, without talking about the model. And so if, if the question asks, like in part A, to describe the nature of the association between price and quality, it's not asking you um, to talk about the model, it's asking you to describe the, the points, all right? And so we need to be descriptive here, um, and unfortunately we can't be very quantitative. So this is another situation where we can't rely on quantities to, to help us back our answers. Now, once again, if we were given an R value or if we did go ahead and calculate R, the correlation coefficient, that is one quantity we can use to speak to the strength of linear association. But in this situation, we don't have that. Um, and it might be take a little too long to go ahead and find that value. So we're gonna try to answer part A without having to find any quantities that aren't obvious. All right, so describe the nature and association. So anytime, anytime you're describing a set of bivariate quantitative data, like a scatter plot, um, the important aspects are the direction. So as X increases, is Y increasing as well, or is Y decreasing? So that's your direction. Um, the second important aspect is the form. Is there a consistent increase slash decrease? or is there a fast increase that then slows down? Um, so that means like, is there a linear relationship or is there a curved relationship? Okay, and then the strength. Do the data points seem to very strongly follow the trend, like a strong linear association or a strong curved association, or do the data points seem scattered? All right, and again, that can be quantified, um, but in this particular instance, we don't really have, uh, we don't have that quantity. Granted, I think you can plug these numbers into your list one and list two to find the correlation coefficient, but um, I don't think they'd ex expect you to do that with so much estimation. All right, let's get into part A. So I went on and I said, and of course I am answering in context any where I can. So I started off by saying, as price in dollars increases, it seems that the quality rating tends to also increase. Notice this keyword here, tends to. Um, 
it doesn't always happen. So you cannot say as price increases, quality rating increases, um, because it's not always the case, all right? We can see many examples where price is increasing, um, but quality actually decreases. So it is important that you get this word in here, okay? And this, of course, is a sentence referring to the direction. Okay, next. The association appears curved. Okay, so this is the form. And I think it's important that you at least try to explain why you're saying curved or linear. Um, so don't leave your answer all alone without any explanation. So I, I go on to say that the association appears curved as the rate of quality increases, uh, the, the rate of quality increase seems to slow down at higher price levels. All right, what do I mean by that? Well, at these first set of price levels, there seems to be a pretty clear and steep increase in quality as price increases. However, for more expensive, um, for more expensive typewriters, notice that the price is increasing pretty drastically, but there's not too strong of a, or there's not too steep of a quality rating for those more expensive, um, there's not too steep of a quality rating increase for those more expensive typewriters. So um, if you wanted to fit one single curve or one single line slash curve to this data, it makes more sense, I think, to have something that has a pretty steep increase that then maybe slows down a bit as, uh, as you hit a certain price. And so I don't think it's appropriate to say that there's a linear association between these variables, instead a curved association. And now we go to the strength. Typically, like I mentioned earlier, there would be a quantifiable way of defending this aspect, um, which is the value of R. R, of course, only defends a, the strength of linear association. So since we actually are claiming a curved form, R wouldn't necessarily be too useful here. Um, but even though, uh, even though we are stating there's a curved form, you'll notice that, and again, this is just an assumed curve. This is obviously not necessarily the best curve, but it's something that looks pretty close to, to model the situation. But what you'll notice is that there's a ton of scatter around uh, the curve. So you might wanna mention that the residuals um, seem to be pretty high, or just comment on the fact that the points defined by price and quality rating are pretty scattered. Um, that's a pretty important piece of terminology um, to refer to strength of association. So I went on to say that uh, since the data points of price comma quality are pretty scattered, the association seems moderate or weak. I didn't want to put um, I didn't want to put a definite uh, I guess label on it. So I said moderate or weak. Um, again, since we don't we have lack we're lacking the quantities um, that measure this that measure this um, trait, I, I don't wanna be very sure about my answer. Um, so I think saying moderate or weak is totally fine. All right, and there we have it. Uh, direction, form, and strength. Anytime you're describing bivariate data association, you want to touch upon direction, form, and strength. Okay, and I should say bivariate quantitative data association. All right, Part B. Of the 14 sewing machines, oh, I said typewriters, I think. I think that was actually the quantity from yesterday's problem, maybe. But anyway, all right, so these are sewing machines, not typewriters. Of the 14 sewing machines, subs substantially, uh, oh, sorry, one of the 14 sewing machines substantially affects the appropriateness of using a linear regression model to predict quality rating based on price. 
report the approximate price and quality rating of that machine and explain your choice. Okay, so we basically have to pick an influential point. We have to explain why we chose that point. I think it's fairly obvious looking at, I mean, these are identical scatter plots, so it's fairly obvious looking at the scatter plot. This is the guy that they're referring to. All right, so first off, let's uh, get an approximate set of coordinates. So I wrote that the point at $2,200, comma, 65 quality appears to hurt the idea of using a linear model. All right, because remember what I just drew before? Um, I drew something that kind of looked like Oops. I drew something that kind of looked like that, um, where really this point out here is, is the one that really makes my eye think of a curve rather than a line. Um, if we were to ignore that point, I think it's much more reasonable to, to think that we could fit some sort of a line to uh, the rest of the data. So it seems to be that this point is hurting the idea or is going against the idea of using a linear model. All right, so that's the point. And why is that? Well, I wrote that this typewriter, <laughs> which again, it's a sewing machine, This sewing machine was about $700 more expensive than the next most expensive model, All right? So I went up, now I'm using actual quantities to justify my answer. So yes, this is the next most expensive model. So this was about $700 more expensive than that model. Yet, so it's $700 more expensive than the next most expensive model, yet it was near the middle in terms of quality, right? So we're at the top in expense, but we're in the middle or near the middle in terms of quality. Now I'm not done. I go on to say that this goes against the trend of a consistent increase in quality as price increases, all right? And so that last sentence really ties together the fact that there is not this linear growth. It seems like as we hit a certain price level, uh, the quality sort of, the, the increase in quality sort of slows down. Okay. So let's go ahead and, and check out actually the scoring guidelines to see what they accept. Hmm. Now this is their, this is their response. And, and again, it does not, your response does not have to be as wordy as theirs. Um, I'm not gonna read the whole thing, you can read it, but what really what I'm import, um, interested in is what they accept as an essentially correct response. So it says, if the response identifies the correct point with reasonable approximations, I think everyone can do that, and gives either of the following two explanations. So you could say that this point um, in conjunction with the entire collection of points appears to have a curved or nonlinear form. I think that's sort of what I'm saying. I don't say those exact words, but I just say that um, even though this was the most expensive by about 700 more than the next most expensive, um, this only exists in the middle of the pack in terms of quality. And I say that this goes against the trend of a consistent increase in quality as price increases. So that's sort of saying, and not the exact words, but it's sort of saying that this goes against the linear trend. However, just as acceptable is, you could have said something like a linear model that includes all points would result in a poor overall fit to the data, largely owing the presence and influence of the identified point. So if you basically mention the fact that this seems to be an influential point or a point that might strongly affect the slope of a linear association, um, you'd get an essentially correct score, okay? So they're open to multiple types of responses. Just make sure that you are justifying your response. All right. Part C, and of course, Part C is just sort of to circle some points. 
Um, it's actually pretty tricky. So Chris is interested in buying one of the 14 sewing machines. He will consider buying only those machines where there is no other machine that has both a higher quality and lower price. So if we go machine by machine, let's start out with this guy. Um, is there a machine that has both a higher quality and a lower price? Yeah, there are a bunch of machines that have a higher quality and a lower price. And so we can get, uh, we can cross that one off the list. Similarly, let's take a look at this guy. Is there a machine that is higher quality and lower price? Yes. So this is not one that Chris would consider. Same thing here. Is there a machine with a higher quality and lower price? Yes. Okay. After you've done a few, you might now get a sense of what is a point that might be a, an actual choice of Chris's. Um, so this point is the one that has knocked out basically all three of these points. Um, this point you'll notice has the highest quality. Um, and yes, there are typewriters that have lower price, but remember, Chris is only going to remove machines that have higher quality and lower. Uh, Chris is only going to accept a machine if there, if no other machine has a higher quality and a lower price. So no machine, no uh, sewing machine has a higher quality and a lower price compared to this machine. All right, so that would be one of the options. All right, if you're still unsure, maybe you still wanna go point by point, let's take a look at this machine. Is there a machine with a higher quality and lower price? Yes, the one that we just circled. So this is out. Same thing here, this one's out. That is true of, well, let's take a look at this one. Is there a machine with a higher quality and lower price? Yes, there is. Which one is that? Hmm. I think it's this one. This one too. Okay. So in fact, the two that I just circled, um, they will cancel out all of these other points. And now we're left with the two these two other points down here. So let's focus on this one first. Is there a point with a higher quality and a lower price? And indeed there is. The one just to the left is higher quality but lower price. And so this would not be one that Chris chooses. And finally, Let's take a look at this point. Is there a machine with a higher quality and a lower price? Well, there is a machine with higher quality. It's the one that's circled. There are many machines with higher quality, actually. But there are no machines with higher quality and lower price. And therefore, this would be our second option. Okay, so there are only these two points, actually, that satisfy the condition. Um, that there are no other machines that have both higher quality and lower price. All right, so these would be your two answers. And there's no really justification required for this part C. Um, simply circle the two points that satisfy the condition. All right, ladies and gentlemen, just as a recap, please make sure that you're answering in context please make sure that you are justifying your responses using the information given to you. Okay. Enjoy your day, ladies and gentlemen. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye.